Good evening, Hellcast listeners, and welcome back to Mama Helly's Fractured Fairy Tales in tonight's Episode 6 of Tales of Redler. In Episode 5, Seeds of Rebellion, King Redler began to sense discord in Redlerovia, some, no doubt, being brought about by the prophet and doomsayer Elijah, and he also noticed an absence of comely beauties in his town. He also ordered the prophet destroyed. So, for nothing the can so far, nothing the Antichrist guard has tried has been effective in destroying Elijah. Lord Redler has sent for his knights Redler, who, you will remember, have split up for the next ten days. Sirs Duncan and Beast searching for the plot leaders, Sirs Nightshade William and Hellermoon seeking the mysterious Strega, and Sirs Mish and Commander were returning to Red Larovia to report to the king. Got all that? Then here we go with tonight's episode, The Prophet's Story. While King Redler paced his throne room, awaiting Sir's mission commander, a page having recently announced their vehicles entering the compound, he pondered the problem of the prophet. I'll say that three times fast. Pondered the problem of the prophet. Who was this Elijah? What is his story? And more, what am I going to do about him, Red thought. The king's thoughts were interrupted when Mish and Commander burst into the throne room, panting breathlessly. My liege, said Mish, we fear there is rebellion brewing in your kingdom. We came back to get your new orders, sire. What do you know, roared King Red? Where is my wench? Where are my knights, Redler? Redler continued, I sent you out on a simple quest. You not only return to me with no wench, but you return without your brother knights. Then you tell me of a rebellion, the truth of which I can see when I watch my network. And why the hell did you not have headsets with you? What were you fuckheads possibly thinking when you left all your communication gear behind? Well, well, I want answers, damn it. A shocked silence followed. Sir Mish, the first to recover from the shock of the Antichrist's tirade, stammered, Our brothers are still seeking, my lord. We thought our camo gear would betray our undercover work, my lord. We are to meet in four days in Herb Gavina, my lord, and compare notes, my lord. Redler, somewhat calmer now, assuaged by Mish's simpering, said, What of this plot? Have you heard anything about this Elijah? No, my lord, offered Commander. But we weren't really looking for that. If you recall, my king, we were seeking you a wench. Do not try my patience, sir, commander. I have an ugly temper. You wouldn't want to make me angry, Redler said. All right, Mish. I want you and commander here to find out all you can of this Elijah, and then invite him to tea in the study tomorrow afternoon. I want everything you can find on him by then. We must find his price for silence. Find out if, if he's part of this rebellion, Red told them. Then you may depart to meet your brothers in Herb Govina, and you all report back here to deal with this prophet thing once and for all. You are dismissed. With that, the two knights went out, with their camo gear, to invite a prophet to have tea with the Antichrist. Damn, said Mish, while they were in the car on the way to the mall. That's where you go to hear what people are saying. I'd hate to see him really pissed. I thought his head was going to explode, didn't you? I sure hope we don't screw this assignment up. That camo gear thing was a stupid move. I tried to tell you assholes, but no, we're going undercover. Smart, really smart. Jesus, Mish, get a grip. We kissed his ass and we're back in his good graces. Let's go in and check out the food court. They say that Elijah Dew comes in there to blow his mouth off from time to time said the commander. So they spent the afternoon talking to people and asking questions and finally had to contact the king. Lord Redler, Mish said into his headset. Yes, Mish. We must report that we have discovered nothing about this Elijah. No one knows anything, or if they do, they're not talking. How do you wish us to proceed? Go to him now. Persuade him, forcefully if necessary, that he should come with you now to my study for a conversation with me. Do not fail me out. Redler smiled as he clicked off his headset. He would find out this prophet's story for himself. No man could deny him when he put it on. He went to the study to await his knights. A surprisingly short time later, the knights returned with a rather docile-looking, barefoot old man of indeterminate age, but very old, yet robust-looking, with long, flowing white hair and beard, wearing robes that might have been horse blankets in a previous life, 
tied at the waist by a braided cord, a biblical description of a prophet come to life with sharp, piercing black eyes that feel like they're looking into your soul when he looks at you. Redler rises to greet him, but doesn't offer his hand. Have a seat, old man. We need to talk. What I have to say can be said while standing, if you don't mind, replied Elijah. The king dismissed the knights. They would not be needed to con control this little man. So what's your story? Elijah, is it? Like from the Bible, Elijah, is, is that who you think you are? As a matter of fact, that is exactly who I am. And God has sent me here to tell your people that the time has come to choose. Those that accept your mark will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You're a kook. I'll have you locked up. No cell can hold me, Redler. You cannot stop me. I will destroy you, old man. I am done here, said the old man, and walked out of the room. Redler sat down to consider his next move. What was going on in Redlerovia? And what exactly are the knights seeking? Stay tuned for next Friday's episode when we'll find out what's going on in the world of Redlerovia. And remember, it's only a fairy tale. <laughs>